Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. I'm making tutorial videos here to help new users to Luminar Neo get up to speed quickly. My playlist for Luminar Neo is there. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so. We've got lots of videos coming and I'll be talking about this app quite a bit. I've been using previous versions ever since the first version of Luminar came out. And because there's a lot of new uh, users with Luminar Neo, I wanted to make a series of videos, help you all get up to speed quickly. In the last video, which you can find there. Um, I covered the Essentials uh, Editing Tools, which is right over here. And now I'm gonna move down to the Creative Tools, which is the next section. And hey, I bet you can guess what the next two videos are gonna be about. Yes, Portrait and Professional. Uh, but today we are in Creative, and I'm gonna start with Relight. Now this is a new tool in Luminar Neo that was not in the previous version of Luminar. And as the name implies, it basically lets you adjust lighting levels um, in the photo and basically relight your photo. It is based on AI and it takes advantage of their what they call 3D depth mapping technology, allowing you to uh, or allowing the tool to basically understand depth in the photo. So, uh, and as in the last video, I'm not going into depth, uh, no pun intended, on every one of these tools because there's too many, but I will come back and do some deep dives. Let me know in the comments down below which videos, uh, which topics you think deep dives would be most helpful for. Um, for brightness near, you uh, you know, as the name implies, you just kind of drag it and brightness near, it starts out kind of just in that lower section of the photo. I've gone to 100, which I don't recommend doing necessarily, but you can kind of see how that's done. It's applied like a gradient there, but then you can take this depth and you can either um, shorten it, shrink it, whatever it is, you know, pull it closer, or you can increase increase the depth into the photo in which that brightness is being applied. And so now I've moved it up to where it's going further into the photo. I'm going to reduce the amount. And then once you set that depth, that's basically deciding between what's considered near and what's considered far in the photo. So brightness far is going to increase the brightness based again on wherever that depth has stopped. And so you're going to have the ability to really just impact light all around your photo in a really positive way, which is great. Um, I think it's a useful tool. And the best part, uh, or one of the best parts, is that you've also got warmth settings for near and far. So you could come in and warm it up or cool it off, whatever you feel like you need to do, uh, again, based on the depth of the photo. So I could come in here and say, well, it's a sunset. I really want to warm that up near and far. So maybe I'll do a little bit of both, get a little bit more of that warm glow uh, in the photo. And uh, you know, conversely, I could do the same, just cooling it off. Um, there could be situations where you want to do uh, one section warmer and one section a little cooler, depending on what the photo looks like. But you can have a nice little impact on the light in the photo and the temperature by using this tool. So there it is before and there it is now. I do recommend, and I covered it in this video, I recommend using Relight AI with other tools. It's not a tool that I would just go in and say, I'm gonna relight this thing and I'm done. I actually think it works best when you connect it or use it in tandem with other things like up here in Essentials, like Develop and Accent AI, which is in Enhance AI and even Super Contrast. Now I wanna to go to Sky AI. So this is uh, a well-known feature in Luminar from previous versions where you can basically replace the sky. It's automatic sky replacement. It's super cool. So I've got a sky here. I'm gonna click on, and this is for my own sky pack. I do sell a sky pack on my website if you wanna check it out. There's a link down below. But I put in the new sky, Luminar recognizes it. It picks all, uh, all the edges and it also gets the reflection automatically. So lots of different tools here about orientation of this guy and how it's going to look in the photo, refining the mask if for some reason it doesn't go in as smoothly as this one did, um, scene relighting. This comes in really handy because you want to make sure that the lighting levels for your scene are going to match whatever the sky looks like. Uh, reflection, if you need to increase that or blur the water, super powerful stuff. Like that comes in really handy. You can see how quickly you can just blur the water. It's picking it up automatically. I can also increase the amount of the reflection if I wanted to. In, or, in other words, you just have great control over it. And then you have adjustments for the sky itself where you can, you know, basically blur it by defocusing, add grain if you need to match things, uh, and adjust warmth and brightness. So lots of powerful tools to control that sky replacement. And honestly, they're the first app that ever did it a couple of apps ago, a few years ago. And I still think that they're the best. It's just powerful. And now it's on, you know, iteration three or four. So it just continues to get better. There it is. And that was with a, a nice sky. I, I wouldn't replace that sky, to be honest, but I can, right? There it is before and there it is now. So super powerful, frankly, just a lot of fun, uh, but a great tool. 
Um, next up is Atmosphere AI, and that's basically, I like to think of it as adding mood, but I don't want to confuse you because there's a tool down here we're going to get to in a minute called Mood. Um, but this Atmosphere, it is actually adding atmospheric elements. So got a drop-down menu, fog, layered fog, mist, and haze. I recommend just experimenting to see what works possibly for your photo. This is not necessarily a photo that I would apply any of those to, but let's say I picked mist. Um, I just dragged the amount of the mist, and you can see mist is working basically in the sky because it would be kind of hovering in the atmosphere, uh, you know, almost like it's uh, trying to rain but not quite getting there. And then depth is going to adjust how, uh, again, 3D depth mapping is going to adjust how far into the photo that's coming. And then the lightness is how bright is it. So same kind of controls over the different settings. Again, just depends on what you're looking for. I might would use this on like a really cool foggy, uh, or not foggy, but like a really cool forest shot when it's like an overcast day and create some fog and mood. You can just do a lot of creative things. And that's one of the things that's so fun about um, Luminar to me is just all these fun, cool tools. Uh, Sunrays is next. So you just click on Place Sun Center. It defaults to there, and I'll just leave it there for now. But um, it basically allows you to add sun rays to a photo. So once you hit Amount and start dragging it, you will see that you get sun rays. Be very careful with this one because when it first came out a version or two ago, everybody, including me, just started sticking sun rays into the photos. But um, like in this photo, if I turn this uh, tool off, the sun's coming from the right-hand side, so sticking a sun right there doesn't really make any sense. So this is demo purposes, but think about, all right, where is the light actually coming from in your photo before you just randomly stick a sun in there? Um, you've got a lot of different controls here over, you know, sun rays length and, you know, all kinds of things, and penetration is like how intense and that sort of thing. You've got actual settings for the sun itself. Uh, and then you've got separate settings for the rays. I like this number of rays. I've done that a number of times where you just really want to create a whole bunch of different rays, or maybe you just want a, a couple and you want to reduce it. Uh, and then you can also adjust the warmth of it. Um, the other thing to think about is with Place Sun Center is you can actually drag the sun center outside the frame. Uh, and then it's actually not actually in your photo, but it's coming in from maybe the direction of where the sun is. So I just recommend experimenting. In this case, it might be better to be here. And I don't know if you noticed, but I actually just, when you drop it like that behind a hill, it's actually recognizing the hill and the sun rays are just kind of coming out from behind the hill. And that would actually make more sense. You might want to come in here and adjust penetration and things like that. But point is experiment, um, have fun, but keep in mind what, where the source of light is in your photo so that it's basically believable, I guess is the best way of putting it. Okay, Dramatic, this is a tool I admit I don't really use a whole lot, but um, it has its place, that's for sure. So as you can see, you just add a little drama by dragging it and uh, you can adjust various settings here as well. And this is something that would go well with a monochrome in my opinion. When I have a really colorful shot, I tend to um, like dramatic to me is basically kind of crunching up things, kind of like I talked about structure in the last video in the essentials tools. It kind of creates a little bit of crunch. And when I have a dramatic photo um, with a lot of crunch in it, um, I want to balance uh, the color and the crunch. Like if you have two, a whole lot of detail and crunch and a whole lot of color, I think it can be visually overwhelming. So again, a tool that I would experiment with, but I would just make sure that I'm careful with depending on the photo. Again, season to taste, like every tool, just do whatever you like, but uh, just, you know, keep some things in mind that if you uh, have a lot of detail and a lot of color and things like that, it can be visually overwhelming um, and uh, something to think about. So, Mood. This is the tool I mentioned earlier where I said atmosphere kind of adds mood. Mood tool is actually for using LUTs. If you're not familiar with a LUT, um, I've actually got a video that I did a while back about what a LUT is, but it stands for lookup table. And basically it just remaps values in a photo to other values. So it's, I hate to call it a preset, but it's kind of like a preset. It came from the world of uh, filmmaking, cinematography, where they will apply a LUT across a scene like in a movie to apply a certain mood with the lighting and the color and things like that. But you can use and build in some apps your own photo LUTs. And in fact, once again, this is sound a little bit like a commercial, but I actually have a LUT pack I sell on my website, which is for monochromes that give you one-click monochrome looks. And then you've got these additional controls for amount, contrast, and saturation if you need it. But 
there's different LUTs that are built in and they all just have different looks. So you, you could click on this involved to see what it does. And I honestly recommend going to 100 and leaving it at 100 when you're checking the LUTs because then you can see what it's really doing to your photo. But I mean, that's a one click massive difference to the photo. Just gives you a lot of control over, uh, you know, whatever it is you may be wanting to do to your photo. But there's also ones in here like this Seattle one is a great one that I use like on cityscapes in a lot of uh, like twilight kind of looks because it has this nice kind of little little bit of a purple tint, but you can see, um, you know, it's a little bit much here, but uh, this is something where I might mask it in, um, maybe ma uh, maybe just erase it at a lower opacity across the bridge. Or, I don't know. Experiment, have fun. But Mood Tool, uh, also known as the LUT tool, very powerful, lots of fun, lots of different creative things you can do with them. Okay, next up is toning, also known as split toning, and I love split toning. I've talked about it in countless videos, but um, it basically allows you to pick a, a color or a hue, as you can see down here, uh, saturation and hue. Hue is the shade of the color that you want, and saturation is the amount, and then you can see it's divided between highlights and shadows. So highlights, I've got a sunset. Hey, maybe I wanna jack up that sunset and create a warmer overall look to the photo. I just did that because I'm in the hue that's red, um, and you can adjust this. So as I drag this, you can see it's impacting the color. I'm in green, I don't really want a green sunset. I don't know anybody that does. Uh, but you know, here I'm blue if I want to create a little bit more of a blue hour look and then eventually I get back over to the, the warmer kind of red tones, but I'll just leave it all the way left at red. Anyway, pick your hue and then pick your amount and just uh, season to taste if you will. And I've covered this in other videos, uh, super powerful tool. I use it on a lot of sunsets and really anytime I kind of want to do a color shift, it allows me to really get a lot of control because all that color went into the highlights, but maybe in the shadows, maybe I don't want that warmer tone in the uh, shadows. Maybe I want more of a blue to kind of do a little bit of a kind of a split, um, not split toning, but like a bicolor toning kind of look where I'm getting a little bit more blue in the shadows, which for a sunset like this time of day, I don't know that I would do that, but like on street scenes, uh, like in twilight when it's maybe uh, past sunset and kind of in blue hour, I might would do some warmth in the highlights and then in the shadows do a little bit of cool. But as you can see, great power and control over the color in your image by separating highlights from shadows and picking a different color and a different amount for each. So great tool. I love it. I'm a fan. I'll, uh, I'll include it in, in a billion videos from now uh, because I just, I just love it. So um, I recommend using it if you like to play with colors like I do. Uh, the matte tool is, as the name implies, it creates kind of a matte look, which to me is kind of a vintage or faded look. So the amount, I'll just go to 100 and with no other setting changes. You can see I basically just created this photo, which is Rome, by the way. That's the River Tiber, I believe it's called. The Vatican's over there to the right. But it was just a beautiful sunset. But there it is as a regular photo, if you will. And there it is with kind of a vintage look. And then you can pull this fade in as well, and you can see what that's doing. It's basically just fade is, in my opinion, just kind of removing a contrast. And so it's getting more of that washed out look. Whereas if you don't have that, you got more contrast in the photo. So it kind of plays with those. And in fact, you've got a contrast slider here. You can see as I drag the contrast left, it's kind of creating that faded look. Um, it also has color toning as well. So a powerful, powerful tool if you want to create these kind of looks. Not something I do. I tend to like vibrant, bright, colorful photos or kind of intense monochromes, which Matt could work on that, but it's not something I use, but it's uh, definitely powerful and useful if that's your thing. Okay, next up is Mystical, and I, I, I just adore this tool. I use it all the time. It kind of creates some like romantic lighting. As you see um, here, as I drag it to the right, it kind of creates a little bit more contrast, but the brighter parts of the photo get a little bit hazy and a little bit brighter. So when I go to 100, you can see that it's really um, it's contrasty and it kind of smooths out some of the details and it kind of brightens some of the highlights. So I don't know, it's just, it's mystical. Um, it's just kind of romantic lighting is the way I think of it. And you've got additional controls down here if you want to control the shadows, how smooth it is, and then also mess with some of the colors. I use this a lot, um, especially like if I'm shooting in a city and I have a twilight uh, shot or even a sunset shot, could be a landscape uh, or a city. Um, but those edges of the day, I like to add a little bit of mystical just to kind of create a little bit more romantic lighting. It's just a thing I like, uh, but powerful tool, lots of fun. It certainly has its place. Glow has lots of different options. I've had people ask me, hey, where's Orton? 
I, I can't find Orton. It's in Glow. So you've got four different tools here. Soft Focus, Glow, Orton, and then Orton Soft. So Orton Effect is just, um, I recommend you go read about it if you want to uh, know more about Orton Effect. But um, it's a very popular uh, tool that a lot of people use for, you know, lots of different reasons. So you've got, um, honestly, it kind of goes a little bit with mystical to me. It's, it's, I almost feel like those tools have uh, some things in common, right? So anyway, you've got different options here. Glow is going to really pop that sky, as you can see, kind of like the mystical did, but it's not having the impact on the rest of the photo like mystical did. So again, just experiment and have fun. Don't forget to play with the tools down here below, but glow is a nice one and can give you some nice kind of um, these are, you know, we're in the creative tools, right? So these are creative things that give you some mood. Um, not to be confused with the mood tool, which is lots, but you get it, right? So you're just kind of creating uh, kind of romantic lighting and mood and just kind of putting, uh, creating some emotion kind of in your photo. That's, I don't know how else to describe it. So that's what those do. And then film grain, as the name implies, fairly simple and straightforward. You just drag it to the right to increase uh, or add film grain, and then you can increase the size and the roughness. Um, as uh, as you see fit, I gotta I'll be honest. I don't like I don't like noise in my photos. I don't like film grain. Nothing wrong with it if you're a film photographer. Hey, there's nothing wrong with it. I've looked at plenty of photos over the years that have film grain, and they're amazing photos, and I can admire them. I just don't want it in my photos. So this is not a, a religious uh, battle that I want to get into with anybody. Um, not something that I would use, but you know I can totally see where it would be useful to somebody. Like I could see doing a moody black and white with you know whatever kind of look to it, and maybe you want to add a little film grain to make it look kind of vintage. You could pair that with the matte tool to create a little bit more of that matte or vintage kind of look. There's a lot of creative tools here. We're in the creative category, as there should be. What I recommend is play around with them and just have fun. And the other thing I recommend is I actually start with the, the tools up here, some of these essential tools to kind of get my base photo, and then I go into creative. And so that's how I like to do it because I like to kind of get the light right and the contrast and those kind of things before I go in and do some of these things um, in the creative tools. Um, also note that sometimes, like with uh, Mystical, those will impact contrast. So what I might find myself doing is finishing here and then going back up to essentials to further refine highlights or shadows or whatever. So there's nothing wrong with bouncing around. Um, I just tend to start at the top and work my way down, but then sometimes I do have to go back up to the top to further uh, refine the light in the photo, for example. But um, anyway, that's a quick tour of the creative tools. Lots of power, lots of control. Frankly, just a lot of fun stuff. A lot of creative things, hence uh, the category name. And honestly, these are some of the tools that make Luminar Luminar. This is what I think causes Luminar to stand out from a lot of different apps because you have all this cool stuff that you can't really get quite the same version of this in every other tool. So um, it's maybe one of the reasons that you're here today. So anyway, that is my high-level overview of creative. Any specific things you want me to see uh, deep dives around, I'm more than happy to go back in and make additional videos, which I'll be doing anyway, but I'm curious about your feedback. Other than that, uh, thanks. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Hope this video gives you an idea of how to get started with that stuff. If you have questions, leave them down below. See you in the next video, my friends. You guys take care of yourselves, and until then, adios.